Hello, money experts. We've been learning all about money in Chapter 3, and we began our study thinking about the value of money. When we think of the value of money, we think of the value of different coins in our monetary system. In order to think of it, it helps to know how many coins it takes to make a dollar. When we think of one dollar, we might think of 100 pennies, but we might also think of one dollar in terms of dimes. Knowing that one dime equals 10 cents would help us think of how many dimes it would take to make one dollar. Knowing that one dime is 10 cents, ask yourself how many dimes would it take to make one dollar? If you said 10 dimes, you are correct. We can also think of coins in terms of quarters. A quarter equals 25 cents. Knowing that one quarter equals 25 cents, ask yourself, how many quarters does it take to make one dollar? If you said four quarters, you got it. Another important thing to consider is how to represent the value of money in terms of dollars and coins. In this example, if we had two dollar bills, five dimes, and three pennies, this would be represented with a dollar sign and decimal point and read two dollars and fifty-three cents. It's very important to say the word and when reaching the decimal point to tell the listener that you're transitioning from dollars to coins. Making change is another important concept when it comes to money. Like any time you've been at the store and watched your parents pay with cash, cash is another term for money, You'd notice that the cashier or vendor oftentimes owes them change back. In this example, Meg buys flowers for $3.35. She pays with a $5 bill. How much change should she receive? Like all word problems, we begin by identifying the question. I see that in this example, the question is, how much change should she receive? My next job is to decide what strategy I'm going to use to answer that question. One strategy is to count up like a racetrack. In order to count up like a racetrack in this example, I would start by identifying the cost of the item. In this case, Meg is buying flowers for $3.35, and that is where my counting would begin, $3.35. I would then work to add coins until I made it to the next even dollar. In order to make it to the next even dollar, I might add a nickel, which then brings Meg's change to $3.40, then add a dime, $3.50, add a quarter, she's now counted up to $3.75, add another quarter, and we've made it to the next even dollar, $4. In order to get from $4 to $5, the vendor would add a dollar bill to complete the amount of change that Meg is owed. Now that we've identified the coins that it might take by zooming up the racetrack, we need to total the coins to figure out how much change was given back in all. In order to do that, we would add the value of a nickel, a dime, two quarters, and one dollar bill. We might do this by chunking. I know that five cents plus 10 cents equals 15 cents. And I know that 25 cents plus 25 cents makes 50 cents. By chunking, it's easier to now think of it as 15 cents plus 50 cents, which makes a total of 65 cents. 65 cents plus one dollar is a total of $1.65. This could be used then to answer to the question, Meg should receive $1.65 in change. That's how we might count up to find how much change is owed. There's another strategy we might consider. Here's the same word problem. Meg buys flowers for $3.35. She pays with a $5 bill. 
How much change should she receive? In order to answer that same question, I might use a different strategy called writing a number sentence. In order to write a number sentence to calculate the amount of change owed, I would start with the amount that she paid with. In this case, Meg paid with a $5 bill. I then need to find the difference between the amount paid and the amount owed. In this case, Meg owes $3.35. Whenever we're looking to find the difference, we know that the operation we need to choose is subtraction. So I will subtract $5 minus $3.35. This will take regrouping, because when I have zero pennies, I cannot take away five. So I need to look next door to my dimes. I see that there are zero dimes to regroup with, so I must go all the way to my dollars to begin regrouping. Instead of having five dollars, I will have four. And now I have ten dimes. My pennies can now borrow from ten dimes to make ten pennies. Ten pennies minus five pennies equals five. Nine dimes minus three dimes equals six dimes. I need to include my decimal point to show that I'm now moving into my dollars. And $4 minus $3 equals $1. This is another way to show that Meg is owed $1.65 in change. So think, which strategy do you prefer when making change? Do you like to count up like a racetrack? Or do you prefer to write a number sentence? Either strategy will get you the right answer. Good luck with tonight's example problem and bring any questions you have to class.